team came in this morning for uh, for some film work. Um, we uh, we typically don't go twice during the week during the day, um, and it's really hard when you go from one prep to the next in league play to look back very often because you've just got to get the guys focused on the next one. Uh, but I thought there were some things that we needed to see from Ole Miss, and uh, given the fact that Wednesday was a day off, uh, we came in this morning and watched some of those things. And I think in watching uh, more of the league now, again, last night, there were three games last night, plus you know preparing for Mississippi State. When I said we got 15 regular season games left, we could win them all, we could lose them all. Um, I think it's just accurate. Um, there's uh, the, the quality of the league from top to bottom is really good. And um, I told the team this morning that uh, the best team in the league may not win the league. It, it's going to be the team that is is able to manage to to uh, to get ready for everybody and um, not have a letdown. That's hard to do in an 18-game schedule. Um, but it's going to be a grind. Excited about the opportunity in Mississippi State. Um, you know, they're, they're undefeated at home. They've got 12 home wins more than anybody in the country. Um, you know, they're one of the better defensive teams in our league. Uh, you know, teams don't score a lot of points against them. They don't send teams to the foul line, and we go to the foul line, uh, uh, try to go to the foul line a lot, so that's going to be a, 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 an issue there. Um, they're 13-2 and two when Witherspoon, Witherspoon scores 20 or more, and, and one of them was last year here. Um, they scored 64 points in the second half here last year. Um, and so um, we're going to have to work on some defensive adjustments this time to, to do a better job of guarding them. And so, uh, um, you know, again, really good opportunity. We've got, uh, we've got at least two buses of, of students heading down, uh, heading, I guess it would be um, west. A little southwest or just west? Northwest. Is it a little northwest? Okay. All right. My oh, man, well, that's far south. A little northwest. Heading west. Um, that's really exciting uh, for our students and for our, you know, for our fans. So it's not going to win or lose us the game, but it's going to provide. Uh, it, it'll it'll really improve the environment. Um, I think one of the things that uh, I've always been just in such admiration of is SEC football and the way fans travel. Um, it just makes each environment very bowl-like, very tournament-like, like in the NCAA tournament, you know, it's not all just, you know, it's the place is full and we got 20 people sitting behind our bench and maybe, and that's it. Um, that doesn't make for as competitive an environment. So. Questions. What kind of mood do you sense when you're around the community, students, whatever? Then how, how much has the mood changed going up from start of the season to during this hot streak? You notice it, you know, when you you notice it coming in out of church or walking in out of a store. Um, yeah, it's 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 definitely uh, people are excited and and they're 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 they're, they're definitely taking notice. Um, you do you do notice it on campus too. You know, walking walking around campus and. Um, it all, you know, it's winning does that. Um, I don't notice a lot of difference in my team and in my locker room. Um, um, interestingly, they're, they're, you know, that they're they're pretty much the same. And and, uh, but you're right, yeah. The community is definitely, uh, it, it has a different feel to it. There's joy. If you had to sum up kind of the biggest key to this what's been going right, what y'all been doing right? What, what, what I think, I think you know, we're defending. Um, you know, and, and then look, when we don't, you know, Arkansas puts up 47 in the second half and almost had uh, maybe 45 at halftime yesterday. Um, you know, and uh, we can't win that way. Um, and um, so I think, again, focus on our defense and rebounding and free throw shooting and the things that we've improved. Um, and then the only thing I add, would add is I thought that offensively um, we got we were a little sloppy. We didn't execute, um, and uh, again showed that to the team again. Where they, where they, it's one thing to hear it from me. It's another thing to see it. 
Um, so we're working on continued just Im Im improving. Um, and you know, players are doing they're they're doing a terrific job. I mean, they're 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 bought in. They're trusting each other. They're they're making each other better. And we got to keep we got to keep going that same direction. You, you talked about after the game winning a game where you didn't play great. Right. How important is that for a team to see that too? To go oh, look, you don't have to press and, and you don't have to be perfect to win. You just have to do the things that you're you're coached to do. Um. I don't know if 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 my my point after the game was just quite honestly, you know, we didn't play our best. Ole Miss had a lot to do with it. And I think more we were fortunate to win. Um, no, I, I go would go the other way. I'd say no. Forget about the pressure. If we don't play up to our ability, we won't win. We don't have a chance to because there's just, there's just no margin for error. We're undersized. Um, if we don't shoot it, we won't win it. I mean, just that's the reality. So it's not about putting pressure or taking pressure off and going, look, just to make that point, I'm glad you asked the question. No, the point is, look, if we don't play well, we're going to lose. We we didn't play well, and we're fortunate to win. So let's let's recognize it, be grateful for it, and realize that ain't going to happen very often. So, um, you know, like to go down to Mississippi State, we're going to have to go down and play great to have a chance to win. We've played a lot of great basketball. We're capable of it. But I don't mind putting that pressure on I want to put that pressure on them because that's the reality of it. Realistically, you've been striving for this kind of rotation, you, and you played last year with nine, ten, whatever it was. Uh, but you've been striving for this kind of rotation and balance of minutes. While you've been here, you've had a lot of guys playing the thirties. This is probably the closest you've got to what you really wanted to achieve. When did the buy-in come from it, though, player-wise? Because with basically all right. returning personnel, <clears throat> except for Chuma and, and Davion, yep. you can the buy-in for this. Yep, yeah, that's a great question. And the buy-in took place when they began to trust each other and respect each other. The buy-in took place when, when they looked at their teammates and went, he's going to class, he's in early, he's getting shots like I am, he's getting his rest, he's, you know, he deserves the minutes like I deserve the minutes. It became respecting one another and trusting one another. Um, and that's, that's, that's when that took place as opposed to maybe – you know, maybe let's just say in years past, sometimes upper upper classmen say, oh, "It's my turn. I'm a senior. It's it's my turn," and the other things don't matter as much. No, it, that's not why you're going to get the rotation or the minutes of the role. You're going to get it because you've earned it, not because you're a senior. And so that may have been a misunderstanding, or um, or maybe not everybody was as completely engaged. And then you feel like, "I've earned this. I've earned this bad shot. I've earned this." force I've earned this those minutes and you know when everybody's working hard and you trust one another respect one another um, when you are um, not um, when you're happy for another man's success as much as you are for your own that's when that's when you have chemistry and that's when you have the buy-in and and that's that's where where this team is is right now do you maintain that throughout the season certainly losing uh, challenges that you know winning winning you know Cures everything. Is there one of your Tennessee teams? Because stylistically, this is the closest you've gotten to, to what you did at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So, it's, is there one of those teams that, because of the minute breakdown, the point contributions? Because most of them usually had like two guys who really pulled away. Here, you've gotten it much more balanced. Is there one that stands out? Of I don't know that I could pick point to one the team, um, but that would certainly be a mantra and a. Uh, 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 something that that our programs would like to be built upon, whether it be playing hard, playing together, you know, playing the right way, and um, and these guys are demonstrating it. And, and not every Tennessee team I had did that, but that was certainly a big part of our success. You know, to play nine guys and keeping the minutes and the twenties for the hot, how much can that help you for the long term conference? Well, I think it'll help us, um, you know, uh, because like I said to you last week. Um, I was concerned about Ole Miss a little bit because I felt like I felt like Sunday and Monday we were we were tired, um, and uh, it wasn't a it wasn't an overconfident thing. It wasn't a it wasn't it was just we're tired we're physically and mentally tired. I think having played uh, you know gone to Tennessee and play Ar you know Arkansas and just to, just um, so 
Um, that I think in the long run that that certainly can help. And yet there are certain guys that have to be on the floor at certain times. Otherwise, you know, with Bryce Brown has got to be on the floor defensively um, in order for us to be able to close out games. Um, you know, Jared has got to be uh, in a position to be out there closing out plays. Mustafa has to do what he does. And um, now they, they, you know, they don't necessarily need to do it every single night, or, or, you know, because because we do have some depth. Did this team in any way get better? All the adversity with Angel and Austin, they had to come together, had to kind of circle the wagon. Did they actually grow from that because they had to? I think more of probably getting an opportunity to go this summer to Italy and begin the process of, 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 of playing together, trusting, respecting, enjoying one another had a lot more to do than, you know, than simply the, you know, the adversity. Um, you know, part of it, look, the adversity is the reality. The reality is we, we got a lot smaller real quick, and then we had to overcome that. And, and when we go up against teams that are really big, strong, and physical, uh, it'll, be, uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be even a, a greater challenge. Um, our thing with those guys are really just the pain of the fact that they themselves aren't able to be out there. You know, we're more, our, our, our hearts and minds are more broken for Austin and for Dangel that, 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 that part of their joy isn't is isn't they're not able to play and and so more so than than uh, at least at this point now you catch an injury we catch foul trouble we find ourselves in a position where we're at Murray State we got six guys that are available to us and now all of a sudden our numbers are such and now okay you know it's it's really affected our ability to win or lose because we're so we're so short uh, as far as the body count is concerned. Do you do you think there's still do you still hold out hope that those guys might play this game? I do, I do. I, I still, you know, I still, uh, I still know that we're working um, with the NCAA through that process, and uh, you know, I think it's still a possibility. When there's been so much of a defensive improvement first from last year, and again, personnel-wise, there has not been a massive change. Uh, is it as simple as I don't want to pin it on one, two, three people, but the biggest changes are Chuck was your defensive coordinator. T.J. Dunnans was a bit of a defensive problem, uh, and D'Angelo, quite frankly, was a defensive liability, mainly due to injury later in the season. Is it as simple as just? That's I, not really I, I think the fo- I think I think the, uh, the, the 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 improvement of the defense is from from last year. We recognize those areas, and again, if you look back, I bet you I talked about it in the spring even. Our dropback defense, our transition defense. Hey, Ole Miss killed us in transition in the first half. Some of it was the offensive imbalance, shot selection, runouts, um, and uh, um, free throw shooting. Those things worked were worked on all spring, all summer, and and then again in the fall. Um, and um, um, I think that you know it's interesting in, in, in football you 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 have an offensive coordinator you have a defensive coordinator you have offensive coaches and defensive coaches and basketball really don't have that and so you know for me um, I've always believed that um, there shouldn't be too many voices offensively on the coaching staff because the head coach really needs to be the voice what's a good shot what does he want what doesn't he want because what a what an assistant coach may tell tell a player. Um, could be different. It needs to be one voice, and so most of the time, staffs are built with their with their assistant coaches focusing a great deal on the defense. When we began, when we recognized that there was areas of weakness, I, I, I took more responsibility for it, and um, and and we we spent more time on it. We just focused on it more. The personnel changes would be simply, I think, rather than any criticism of guys that were out there in the past, it would be more, look at the four guys that were added. Um, Davion, um, you know, Davion is going up against Witherspoon. Um, Witherspoon was ranked fourth or fifth in the ESPN rankings as far as point guards. Davion's was anywhere between 12 and 15. And, and yet my challenge to Davion is, I like Witherspoon a lot, I like him a lot. And one of the reasons why I like him so much, he's a great defensive guard. And I'm able to pick that up through watching him and scouting him. He's impressed me like that. And I wanted to make sure Davion understood 
that others would be will be impressed too with you in that regard but don't lose sight of the fact that's one of the things that you do really well now keep doing it <clears throat> chuma um his ability to move his feet and and guard his position both inside and out huge and then chuma and deshaun are both good rebounders at their position um whereas the four spot last year we were undersized and we didn't always rebound at our position as well and therefore the improvement in rebounding and then malik is is a physically tough player who is learning to defend. Um, he he didn't he didn't have that he didn't get that in junior college because he was physically able to overwhelm people. Now he's guarding guards and he's learning how to be a better defender. So I think it's the addition of those four players plus the reality from Horace and Anthony and Mustafa and Jared and Bryce of why we didn't win a year ago and what we need to do to win. So I think it's a whole. Those those team effects would be the reason for our improvement. Bruce, are Austin and Danjo going to start school today? And yes. Those guys to be with the team regardless. Of the yes. Team. Yes, I do. Because it's been two months, Bruce, for the for the staff, as for Jordan and Frankie, is there any update? Because now it's two months. Right. I mean, when it was two weeks or a month. Yeah. It's two months. Right. Now, and you're starting beginning of the week. What what is going on? Yeah, I've had no update. I've had no update. Well, the free throw shooting has been important to us, and, and um, uh, it has been a positive thing that's been up and down the roster. And again, we talked, I, I mentioned it one at a time, I'll, I'll tell the story again, just because I think it's, I, I just think it's so, it's just true. Um, and um, so often when coaches will go to practices and watch high school practices or an AAU practice or things like that, sometimes I, I take notes. And most of the time the coaches think that I'm taking notes about what I'm seeing, because the reason why I'm in their gym is to see a player or two. And they think I'm taking notes about a player, and what I'm not, I'm writing down their drill, or I'm writing down that offensive set. And so we were in Atlanta, this, Steve and I, one 6 a.m. workout this fall, and uh, coach put 15 minutes on the clock, and they started this free throw contest. And what they called it was, they called it the 50 club. And the idea was to put two guys on the line, and they shoot um, 10 in a row. If they can make 10 in a row, if they miss, the other player gets up and rotate. But if they can make 10, 10 in a row, they join the 10 club. And then they rotate. Go again, keep shooting. If you miss, the other player shoots. But if you make 10 in a row again, now you're in the 20 club. And what, they, what the coach found was that over a period of 15 minutes, if he, the, the highest he was ever got was 50, that somebody got to the 50 club. So we started that drill. And interestingly enough, the highest we ever got was 70. Daniel Purify was getting 70. He was, uh, he's a great free throw shooter. So that's helped, um, I think, just uh, um, with, our, with our free throw percentage. And it's made a big difference in the outcomes of the games.